the record button. Uh, most of them are multiple choice, so uh, really you should have no problems with that stuff. The open-ended one are the only ones that you know you might that the ten problems may come in handy. There's four choices in most things. Some things even have just two. So, so and you have ten chances to get them right. Um, on the tests, you have three tries per question. Um, I had originally said it when I thought I was setting it up, I thought it was three tries for the test because usually something happens and you um, like things go awry. Uh, but this one doesn't work like that. It, each question has three attempts. So I mean, I guess it's kind of the same thing if you internet goes out or you um, are doing the test and you get called away. There's no time limit on it. Um, you can shut it down and come back to it. Uh, so that is fine um, on the test as well. With the homework, um, there's three grades. An A is a 85 or a better. And so what's going to happen is I will see in here, you know, obviously there's nothing in it at the moment, but in score view, I'll look and I'll see um, a percentage that's done. And so right now this says, you know, 5%. That's really um, that's the current one. So like I'll look and see how many points you've scored on each thing and it will give me a percent. And so um, I really need to put this as past assignments and you know, you'd see, you'll see a percentage of the assignments that are here. And that's what I look at. Um, and so I, periodically throughout the semester, I'll, I'll put in the homework grade just so you have an idea of where you are. And so if it's an 85, so right now current ones, um, like I would look at this and go, okay, so like this number here doesn't make any sense. Like Kyle did, you know, got eight and 8.8 .8 out of nine. So really, you know, he has much more than 5%, but it's 5% from all of the things that are there. So you'll notice there's lots and lots and lots of homework points. Um, so that's where this number comes from. So it really doesn't make any sense. Um, but what I'll do is I will look at it and go, oh, you got, you know, an 85% or better. That's an A. A 70 to an 85, that's a B. Less than 70% is an F, um, pretty much, because you know I'll give you whatever the grade is, but mostly that's going to be an F, um, because I do all the homework with you, pretty much. So if you're not here, you know, like in class, like when I do this in class, it makes much more sense because I'm there and I'm walking around and helping people and trying to get make sure they get the answers and understand the questions. Um, I will do it with them, you know, so there's no reason to not get them all done. Uh, here, obviously, some people are going to do it on their own, um, and that's okay. But again, um, like I look at this as like homework is, you know, do you, is where you get the problems and try to get understanding of it. And you can do these over and over and over again. So if you want to see it, if you go in and you're like, oh, I didn't understand question three, you can redo question three. and take it again as many times as you want. And once you get one right, it, it, it's fine with it. It doesn't take any points off for any of the wrong ones. It just allows you to do multiple attempts of each problem. So um, most quiz uh, test questions are coming right from the ideas that we're talking about because um, it's generated right from the, the computer. Um, and I take you know some from each chapter and go, okay, these are here's, you know, here's eight questions from chapter two and here's, you know, 10 questions from chapter three and, and like 25 points. So seven questions from chapter four. I don't remember how the chapters are broken up, but I think that's how it is. And that will, each question is worth one point. So, um, you know, some questions have multiple points, some parts, some questions don't, and but each one is worth one point all total. And that's how you get the test grades. Um, there's four tests. If at the end of the semester you have an A, you don't have to take the final. Um, so it's good to do the work because, you know, you'll get an A. Because, uh, um, again, you know, like people who tend to do well in the class, like there's no sense in me going, oh, well, here's this, you know, two-hour final, which is a project that really takes you about 15 hours to do. You know, you know go do it and, and pro probably harm your grade. You know, I'm not, I'm not a so like if you're done you're done and and like we'll go from there um you know feel free feel free to email me i don't don't use the messages in here um through uh web because i don't get them 
like I have to come in here and go, oh, look, there's a message, and then I will answer it. And usually it's like somebody asking me for extra time. And I have no problem saying, oh, you need extra time. I usually just grant them. You know, like I'll see that, you know, there's a submission, you know, extensions. I'll just change the date on there and boom, it's done. But like I try to keep us up to snuff because we I go a chapter a day. <laughs> so, um, you know, and like these homework assignments, this isn't due until June 6th. You know, so that's like a week away. You know, you have a week to do the work in, on stuff that I'm going to show you how to do in class. So like in the two hours, we should cover most of the questions. And, um, you know, realistically, you shouldn't need the whole week. You may have like two or three problems to do from now until like it's due. Um, so that's kind of how that is all set up. Um, I was trying to think, is there anything? The book, like I said, you don't need to buy it. It's um, free. There is links to each chapter in each week. So like if you're in chapter one here, um, here is the link to the web page for chapter one. If you don't like the reading it off the web, you can print out the book. Uh, don't print out the book because it's 900 pages. Um, but there's a PDF version of the book right here. Um, right here, this is the PDF version of it. Uh, there's also more homework problems that are here. If you really want to purchase the textbook, you can purchase it here or through uh, Amazon. Um, both are going to be cheaper than buying it at the bookstore, um, a lot cheaper. Like the printed version here is like 20 bucks, and the one on Amazon is like 35 because it's a hardcover and color version. Um, this is black and white <laughs> and a soft cover. Um, you know, like, but this is the one thing you do need to purchase is the web assign thing, and I can see you're already in there. Um, they give you two weeks, and then um, they start lock you out if you don't pay for it. Um, but they have a version that's like 30 bucks or 40 bucks. Like, they also have a version that's like $160. Don't buy that one. <laughs> they want you to buy that one. So, like, don't, that's the one they show you, and, and they're like, are you sure you don't want this? But, you know, don't do it. So, um any questions about anything before I start and showing you what statistics is about? No. Okay. Um, so in here in WebAssign, the, the first chapter is really, like I said, is just about um, vocabulary um, and figuring out the differences between population and sample and statistic and um, I can't even think of the word. Um, parameter um, and then what a variable is and what a data point is. And a bunch of these questions ask the same thing. Um, so a sample is just a smaller portion of the population. Um, and then we have to look at to, you know, like we try not, th this is the last time, first time they're going to talk about it and the last time they're going to talk about it. So um, there's a bunch of different types of sampling. There's um, convenient sample where you just go, oh, I'm going to just take, you know, the next person that comes along and ask them a question. And then I'm going to take the next person that comes along and ask them a question. Um, versus a stratified where I break things up into groups and say, okay, well, I'm going to take some from this group and some from that group or um, a simple random sample, which is what everything from now on is going to be mentioning. So like, they don't even bother talking about it after that, where we have some kind of randomized tool, randomizing tool that we use to pick a number and say, okay, well, I'm going to take the fifth person, and then I'm going to take the ninth person, and then I'm going to take the third person, and then I'm going to take the second person, and then I'm going to take the third person, and then I'm going to take the seventh person. And so it just randomly pulls that number, and that's the next person that you ask. Or you know, and it, how many depending on how big it is, and so that's the biggest thing. Um, a parameter is just the math that we do on a population. So if we find the mean of the population, that's a parameter. If we find the standard deviation of the population, that's a parameter. If we find the range of the population, that's a parameter. Whereas if we find the mean of a sample, that's a statistic. And we usually deal with statistics because of the fact that um, we can't 
look at a population usually like there's no way to get all of the people so um that's why we this is called statistics it's it's kind of that simple and then uh variables are the thing we're interested in because it's going to change as we go along and data points are the numbers that or criteria that fill in that variable that we're interested in so if it's color of hair it could be you know red and brown and blonde and, and gray or bald um so it doesn't have to be a number but we like numbers because we can do math on them we can't do math on other types of um variables like you know, we, we like the number we want and that's what we're going to look at pretty much from here on in uh they're going to talk about it now and then they'll talk about it um uh, they'll talk about qualitative data basically in chapter one and qualitative data is just things that aren't numbered uh, whether it's ordinal putting in things in a rank or it's the color of your car or um, you know some kind of characteristic that's a quality versus quantity which is quantitative this is which are numbers which is what we're going to do because it's real hard to to take an average of green and blue cars um, so we deal with numbers and that's you know so like i said a lot of the stuff they're just gonna, here's these are names words and we're gonna then ignore them from chapter two on and you may never see them again and in most of them you don't <laughs> so that's really what is happening here so in chapter and problems one and two they're asking you well we have this thing and this first one's a ski resort and the second one i think it's a a politician and they want to know well what is the population what does it mean to be the population and the population is the entire group so in this case we're looking at then we want to find the age of when children learn to ski or snowboard lessons and so the population is all children who take skiing or snowboarding lessons it's not all the people who ski it's not all the people who take lessons it's not all the people who showed up on a day it's only we're looking at um all student all kids who take snowboarding lessons because that's what we're interested in and then from there we break up and find more information so the sample is just a smaller group of children who take snowboarding lessons so whether it's on a tuesday like we're going to look at the, the third tuesday of the month of december that's the sample um, but however we find that group, it's just a smaller group of the population. The parameter, because again, we're interested in the mean age. Mean is just another word for average um, as we know it. Um, in chapter two, you're gonna see that the average has a bunch of means. So that's why we don't use it in statistics, but um, we have mean, median, and mode. Um, but um, we kind of throw mean and average together because that's the one we learn um, in school and um, that's what we think of as average um, we add the stuff up and divide by 10 you know um, but that's what we're thinking when we hear the see the word average but it's really just the mean um, so the parameter is the mean of the population whereas the statistic is the mean of the sample the variable is the ages of every child in the statistic because it's going to change from child to child and then data points are this one was three this one was four this one was eight as opposed to how many how long they went for uh, uh, lessons how many children were in each you know grouping uh, how many lessons they've taken those are all data points but they're different data points not the one we're interested in at that moment so these are all data but they're not the data of the variable that we're interested in so that's kind of how that works and chapter problem two is exactly the same um problem three again is just like problems one and two we have some more information we talk about uh community college instructor uh looking at the mean number of days that people are absent and they decide that x is going to be the number of days that a student is absent and they want to know well, what is x is it a variable is it a population is it data or is it a statistic and because X is the number of days each student is absent, that's why it's a variable. Had it been X was the mean number of days of, of the sample or of the population, then it would have been something different. Uh, if it had been the X was the mean number of days of the sample, then it would be a statistic. If it was 
X was the number of days total that a student, that all the students are out, that could be, you know, um, the population of X changed, if this was, X was the number of days that uh, you're absent, and then X was the number of days that, uh, and I had a list of, you know, with all the students and how many days they were absent, those would be data points. So, again, we're just kind of looking at um, the def definitions and trying to show how they work. Same thing with this one. Number six and seven, or sorry, five and six, um, ask about, it might even be seven. Nope. Uh, so five and six, ask about types of um, data. And so here we have uh, studies that determine the age, number of times per week, and duration. A resident uses a, a park in San Jose. Well, um, the first house in the neighborhood around the park is selected randomly, and then every eighth person. So, number of times per week is what kind of data? So, it's either qualitative, quantitative, discrete, or quantitative continuous. Now, because it's the number of times per week, that is a countable thing, and countable things are discrete. So, whereas continuous things are measurement. So, time, height, weight. Um, like anything that has decimals in it, that can we can keep breaking down to smaller and smaller pieces. Um, cost kind of is discrete, is, is continuous um, and kind of discrete because I mean technically we only goes down to cents, so we could technically count it. Um, but things could have even parts of cents, so that's why we can look at that as pot. Like the dollars are discrete, the pennies are discrete. Um, but the idea of money is kind of continuous um, because of the fact that it has partial numbers in between, um, even those are only broken down to hundreds. We could, like I said, break them down to further and further if we have taxes and stuff like that. We might have hundreds and thousands of a penny uh, that come along um, or an interest, you know, type of things. Those, that's when money becomes starts becoming continuous as, as we keep breaking it down further and further and further. Um, but uh, Technically, usually when we think of money or age, we think of them as discrete because we talk about number of years. Like if I ask you how old you are, you're not going to say I'm 32 years, four months, three days, 15 hours, and seven seconds. You're going to say I'm 26. You know, like we give a single number, and so we, that's like a discrete countable thing. But technically, age is continuous. So they kind of fall back and forth between the two of them. Um, we can also make numbers qualitative because I might put you in a group and say, okay, well, here's the uh, group that's, you know, our teenagers, and here's the group that's, you know, preteens, and here's the group that's infants, and here's the group that's, you know, young adults, and here's the group that's, you know, seniors, and here's the, you know, like, so we can, we put you in an age bracket and go, okay, well, that's what you are. Like, so that's a quality versus quantitative thing. So some things float back and forth between them, and that's, the biggest idea that you have in here, but um, so here, duration, amount of time. This is qualitative continuous because time breaks down into seconds and thousands of seconds and millions of seconds. So technically, even though we put things, we look at things in number of hours or a number of days, um, really, which are discrete. Realistically, time is continuous. So. Um, you have to look to see uh, and think about those kinds of things. Um, here in problem seven, uh, and there's two parts. So uh, the first part is um, we have an airline asking some questions about a survey. And we want to know, well, what did they do wrong? Why is it a bad survey? And this talks about bias and why surveys aren't necessarily good. And so, we, because remember, whenever we're taking a sample, we want it to be representative. And in this case here, we're looking at flights that are just on Thanksgiving. So that's not representative because most flights don't happen over Thanksgiving weekend. Most flights happen during the business week. So we have different groups that are flying. We have the same six, we have six flights and they only are 
looking at the same flight, Boston to Salt Lake City. So again, it's not Boston to New York and Boston to Miami and Boston to Texas, you know, to Houston. It's Boston to Salt Lake. So they're the exact same flight. So we have issues with what is wrong with our representation, like even spreading it out. So if we're only flying, flying from Boston, then we would obviously, go, we should look to Boston to wherever it is. But if we are a real airline, we might look at Boston Salt Lake and uh, LA to New York and you know Minnesota to Miami. And like, we wanna look to see different flights from different places. So we wanna be as representative as possible uh, when we're looking at our things. And that's what there is here. And so make sure that the difference is here, we have a circle, so there's one answer. These are squares. They have, multi, they have more than one answer. So there's actually three correct answers on this one here and three correct answers on B. And so make sure that you're looking for, if you see checkbox squares, there's going to be probably more than one answer. Um, eight, these are the sampling methods. They, we have cluster, we have stratified, we have systematic, we have um, simple random, and we have, uh, where's that one? Convenience. And those are the five different types they're gonna look at. This is the last time you're gonna see this. <laughs> and so I don't even keep them in memory, especially the difference between cluster and stratified. I can't tell them apart there. I believe cluster is we break them into groups when we take one of the groups. Stratified is we break them into groups when we take some from each group, um, but I have a tendency to get these two backwards. So, um, and because they're to me mean the same thing. Uh, I've never, you don't do them. Um, we don't talk about them ever again. And you'd think by after like 15 years of teaching this, it would be stuck in my head, but I still don't get them straight because this is the only time it's mentioned this one class for about four minutes and then I'm done. <laughs> So I forget about them immediately. Um, and so, which is one of the reasons why I give you 10 choices. So, um, but that's what those are. Uh, there's the last, we, we've done eight problems and we now are getting to some math and the math is counting. So um, this year we're looking to make a, a contingency table. Or actually we're making a frequency table, sorry. Um, and a frequency table is just finding the frequency of things that happen. And so usually we break things into groups and we'll have like, usually when I would do this, I might have, oh, I have a few people, yay. Um, and so I might ask in a class, you know, how many pets do you have or how old are you? And I then, you know, put down classes and then we just make a tally of, okay, well, uh, number of pets and we'll start with zero and one and two and three and four and five or more because you know there's crazy people and then we just make hashtags you know so then when we're done we keep count we, we count and go oh, okay here's my group okay i had two six five, three, I probably should have not put this one in here, or made this a one, whichever, I'll make this a one. Just make my life easy, zero and one. So now I have to do, oops, that doesn't work out. That's 11, that's not a good number. Uh, I guess I'll leave that at 12. I'm just trying to make that decent numbers or are not decent numbers at this point. Because um, it'll be 15, I'd have to get up to 20 and I don't feel like uh, making it that hard. So I have my frequencies. Then I have my relative frequencies. My relative frequencies are I take each value And I divide it by how many things there are. So I have 2, 8, 13, 16, 17. So 2 over 17, 6 over 17, 
You can just leave them as fractions. Uh, you don't even have to reduce them. So if these have been 18, we wouldn't have had to reduce these at all. Um, you don't uh, you don't have to necessarily put them in decimal form um, because you know they don't always come out nice. So that's relative frequency is just the proportion. The reason we care about relative frequency is it allows me to compare one group to another group. So not always do you, the groups have the same amount of uh, people in them so or things. So I can now look and go, okay, well, here's the frequencies of this group. And I can look at a previous year and go, here's the, here's the frequencies of that class. No, here's, you know, most of the people got have you know uh, six you know between one and two student uh, pets. Uh, oh, in a previous year it was you know three and four pets, and I add, I can because I can just add them up. I can you know add up my pieces. That's what the cumulative relative frequency is. Is we start at the bottom. We start here and we add them up. So that's 2 over 17. And I add up these two. And I get 8 over 17. And then I add up these here and I get 13 over 17. And I add up these 16 over 17. And I add up these. So 16 over 17, and then I add up these, and I get 17 over 17. So cumulative relative frequency is just adding them all up. Now, this is useful here for next chapter when we start talking about um, quartiles. We look to see, and, and the median, we look to see, well, gee, where is the median in this? And median is halfway. The quartiles are 25% and 75%. We can use these here to find those values and go, okay, well, half of 17 is nine and a half, eight and a half. So the median is 13. You know, a quarter of this is four and something. So the four and something vitamin value is in the number one. The third quartile would be you know, 75% of this, so eight and a half and four and a quarter is, you know, 13 and something. So the third quartile is also in here. So the mean, median, and the third quartile are in this group, are three. So they don't have to change values um, based upon what is in there. But that's how we use cumulative relative frequency is we look to use this for means, uh, sorry, for medians and for um, quartiles. And that's what they're asking you to calculate here. They're asking you to find the frequencies. So if we have 50 people, this is 25 of them. This is everything that's left. The relative frequency is this number divided by 50 each time. And then the cumulative relative frequencies is just adding up the dots. And there's only so many of them. So there's not a lot there. And then here they're asking you, well, uh, what percent took exactly two courses? Well, this is a percent. So we need to turn the, they don't care about it here. I can put this in as um, five over 50. Fine with it. Okay. But I have to put in decimal, I have to put it in a percent here. So because the percent sign is there, I can't put this in as 0.1 because there's a, there's a difference between 0.1% and 10%. So, um, those are going to be different things. So you want to make sure that if they're asking for a percent, you actually put it in as a percent. So 0.1 it doesn't like, you have to turn that decimal into a percentage. So or multiply by 100 at a decimal point. Um, one or two courses, we can just add them up. Well, and again, we have the cumulative relative frequencies here. If they'd asked for two and three courses, we would have added up these two and, and found out what that percentage is. And there's our values that we're looking at. Um, that's that whole chapter of questions. Um,
pretty quickly. Uh, so um, those, does anyone have questions about the stuff that like, like does anyone have questions about what the uh, definitions of these things are or how to find relative frequencies? Um, yes. So first of all, nice to meet you. Um, second of all, I, I don't have any explicit questions right now, but I was wondering, you, you, you said you were recording this. Is there any way I can like go back and rewatch this? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to re I'm recording it. When it's done, it will be in um, dip, 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 the online class meets. There, if this button right here, this menu shows the recordings. So once it's done recording, it'll save and put it here and probably like a half hour after I'm done recording it, 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 it just has to um, render it. Okay. Awesome. So they'll be there and you can find the recordings there. And so they'll be there for the entire semester. So if okay. you're like, oh, you know, I didn't get around to doing chapter four and it's now, you know, we're on chapter nine, you can go in and watch the video on how to do chapter four. Okay. If I don't remember, to make if, if I'm doing the class and I don't remember how to do a video, somebody just say, remember to video record this because sometimes I just forget to hit the button. Got it. Nope. Um, and don't, then, sorry. So just say so, and I'm like, even ask, did you did you start recording this? Because I'll be like, oh no, and I'll hit the button and start recording. So. <laughs> um, and then as far as so I I work full time. I like um, like just got off of spring semester and like didn't have a lot of time to check on this before the last like couple days so saw that i was yep. late to pass in the notes which i'm gonna pass in regardless but i was checking the like video not uh web oh, yeah so um so i i haven't deleted the information on video video notes went out of business about three years ago got it <laughs> which is too bad because it was awesome <laughs> like you could take a YouTube video, drop it, drop the URL in. It would timestamp your. You could you would show the video. You would type notes next to it. It would timestamp the notes. You'd click on the note to bring it right to that part, right to the that part of the video. They just lost funding. I have no like they just because it was free, so yep. it was great. I don't know why somebody didn't just up and buy it, you know, and go incorporate it into something, you know, like some bigger company didn't steal their 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 stuff because i've never seen anything like it since but it was great um okay. so i don't care what you use like just you can write it on a piece of paper take a picture and upload the pictures you can okay. you know use a google doc you just, i only look at them so i make sure that i if there's questions i can make sure i answer them and I, I get to them. that's that's the only reason i ask to have them done ahead of time is so i can look at it and go oh um you know, Will has a question on what is uh, mode, and I can make sure I explain mode. You know, okay. or whatever thing it is. You're like, I, and and I'm sure most of the people, almost all the people, will put in. I don't know how to use the calculator. Don't worry about putting that question in. That's why I'm here. Like, <laughs> that's why I do the 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 we the the class is so I have an emulator right here. Um, it has the TI-83. It, I'll show you exactly what to do on it. And this is what people come back and watch the video on because they're like, I don't know how to get to this. Because this button here is not a button you've ever used before and will only use it for stats. So um, like if you're going to do statistics, and this is where most of the stuff is, this and the distributions are the two things that we're going to spend all of our time in um, in this class. And you've never seen them before. And we'll never see them in any other class ever again. Um, so that's why I make sure I show you how to use the calculator. Um, uh, but that, so don't worry about asking that question. How do I do this in the computer calculator? I will show you that part. And that's what, that's really why I make sure I do it this way. Um, and that's why I, I went to this flipped classroom model years ago because I would go through the information and three hours are gone by and I haven't shown anybody how to do any of the problems. And they're like, I don't know how to use the calculator. I'm like, well, sorry, I won't be here until next week. Um, we'll, right. I won't show you again because we'll be moving on to a new chapter. So it just made far more sense to make these videos, turn the a 30, a three hour lecture into a 20 minute video. And then I can spend two to three hours going over the calculator step by step over and over and over again. So that's why I do it. 
uh, and I find that that's far more helpful to everybody because um, uh, while there, yes, there is the math lab and stuff, most of them don't know how to use the, the I mean, they're, they're better at it now um, because they've required statistics. But when I first started working at Middlesex, statistics was not required for any of the classes, any of the degrees, and now it's required for all of the degrees. Um, and when I asked them like 15 years ago why it wasn't required for you know, any of the degrees, and they're like, well, you know, it's not important. I'm like, you need to kind of get a bachelor's degree, you need statistics. So why aren't we, you know, let's not beat around the bush. This is the only class that's going to be useful to most people. You know, they're not taking calculus and they're not using it ever again. You know, unless they're building bridges and, and skyscrapers, very little calculus and trigonometry is going to happen in their lives. Statistics happens daily. <laughs> so, yeah. So, so, but that's, you know, so, you know, all, and if I'm ever talking and you're like, oh, I have a question, just, just yell, hey, can you go over this again? I have a question and I will, because I don't get to see, like, I know they have the hands up thing, but I don't see it. And like I said, I didn't know there were three people in here until I went back because when I started, it was only Michelle and I was like five okay. minutes into class. So just yell. I don't have a problem with that because like in, I do this, I teach this in a classroom, obviously, you know, most of the time. And um, like, I know when somebody has a question because they're, they're raising, raising their hand and waving, um, you know, but like, you can't do that here. So, um, well, you, yeah, there is a hand raise thing, but I don't see it. So, cause I have other screens up. So like there is a hand raise thing here. Like there's, you hit this button, but I don't see this unless I've like, for some reason closed my, close the um, the uh, web assign window, which, you know, I don't do unless I need to, you know, go in and show something. So, you know, just yell and I will gladly go over anything or redo it or um, say it in, you know, well, I won't be able to say it in any other language. So, uh, but I'll say it's lower and I'll, you know, try to reword it or something. Just, just ask. And I'm more than willing to answer the question. And, if you're like, I'm not quite sure what I don't know, but I know I don't know it, <laughs> that's fine too. We'll figure it out. I'll, if you're like, can you do, and I'll do the same problem eight times. I don't have a problem with that. That's not, because my job is to make sure you understand it. That's it. Like, like I'm, you know, like I'm not one of those teachers who is like, oh, you know, I, I, I don't like lecturing. I want to show you stuff. I want to make sure that you understand whatever it is that is happening. Uh, because it benefits you. I've already done this stuff. I get it. You know, so I want to make sure that you get it. Um, as I was telling uh, Michelle, uh, there's three grades in homework, basically. An A is 85 to 100. Uh, B is 70 to 85. And an F is um, below a 70. Uh, you have 10 tries on every homework problem, whether there's two multiple choice options. And when we get to chapter 13, there's two multiple choice options, um, or it's an open-ended thing. Uh, if you need more time, ask. I will grant the extension gladly. I don't have a problem with that. I don't care about late work. I mean, obviously you can't, you have to turn it in by the end of the semester because like on the eight, on August 8th, the, the class closes, just like it opened today. It closes at the very last day because it asks me, when is class going from? So I have to tell it, here's when it starts and here's when it ends. And it opens and closes and sets all that stuff up. Um, if you look in Blackboard and you see a due date that's like from 2015, Blackboard doesn't update any dates. So I like, you know what, it wasn't worth it to me to go through and change the dates when I started doing it because they said, oh, yeah, we're going to put this in. They still haven't done it. I've been working at Middles. I worked at Middlesex. Started working at Middlesex 1997. We bought Blackboard. Started working using Blackboard in 2002, 2003. I don't know. I was there when we started using it. Um, there we we were looking at other things, and they said we're going to put in an updated um, date. Uh, so when you do a new semester, it'll just change the dates. We're like, fine, great. So when I started teaching, they're like, oh, excellent. They still haven't done it. I'm like, you know what, it's not worth the hassle to, to go and change it. Cause it's like, you know, I have, you know, 30 things that are, I'm like, I had to change this every month. Nah, nah, I'm not going to worry about it. Um, so I just go week by week. Um, it, the, the weeks are here. They're in order. Uh, we will skip chapter five because um, 
it has exponential uh, um, distributions. And because algebra one is the prerequisite for this class, you have may not have done exponents. But so they're like, oh, you can't teach it. I was like, but that's dumb because they're going to see it again in chapter seven. <laughs> and they're like, well, I said, because they need to understand how it, they don't necessarily have to even understand how exponential works. They just end up to understand that there's continuous variables because that's what the normal distribution is. And the central limit theorem says, well, when we look at a continuous distribution and we take the averages of it, it becomes normal. And they're like, yeah, we don't care. You can't teach that. So I'm like, fine. So this doesn't get taught. Uh, but we'll see it again here. And I'll, there's one problem. I'll show you how to do it 85 times and then you'll never have to worry about it again. Uh, we do go out of order here. Uh, it goes 10, 12, 11, 13. Uh, because if you need to do the final, this is on the final, this stuff isn't. Um, so I like that the final is available at this moment. Um, pretty sure. Uh, I think it is. Yeah, so this is the, there's a whole bunch of stuff. You know, if you have an A, you don't need to do the final. Um, if you don't, if you have a B, then you have to do some parts of it. If you have below a B, you have to do the whole thing. Um, I would recommend getting an A or a B, which basically means you, the best thing to do that is to come to class, do the work with me when I'm going through it, because the homework is the basis of the um, tests, and then you know you should be good. Um, work really hard on the test. I like I said, I don't care if you look stuff up, because you should. Um, you know, go through, see how it's done, you know, use all your, your um, tools that you have, you know, because, like, to me, I don't see it as cheating. It's learning. <laughs> and that's what you're trying to do is learn. Um, like, if you're a plumber and you need to fix a faucet and you've never seen this, you know, faucet before and you're like, oh, I got to look something up. I'm not going to be upset with that. <laughs> you know, I want my faucet fixed. You know, I, I don't care how you learn, if you learn it at that moment, I just want it fixed. You know, if you're a brain surgeon, you probably should do that before you go into surgery, but pretty much everybody, if you're working on a new car, if you're a mechanic and you're like, you know, I've never seen an Alfa Romeo before. I don't know how, where I know how an engine works, but I don't know where all the things are. And you look it up, great. <laughs> get it fixed like that that that's how we learn that's how things are done so i'm not one of those teachers who like everything is locked down i want you to learn stuff and um, if you have to learn it at that moment you're learning it at that moment but at least you're learning it and that's really all that matters um so but yeah you feel like the first part of this you can do after uh next week i mean after chapter two <laughs> um we talk about uh first part has to do with um, sampling and finding central limit theorem and making histograms and making uh, stem and leaf plots and uh, um, uh, box and whisker plots and all that stuff. So we're going to do that Thursday. <laughs> so if you're like, oh, I want, I don't know if I'm going to do well. I'm going to get this stuff. And then if you have a B, that's all I'm going to require of you is just getting that done. You know, and then the next part is on um doing hypothesis testing which isn't until chapter 10 and then the next part is on regression which is chapter 12. so you could technically do it in pieces and get it done the longest part is the first part anyway um so if you're like i don't know if i'm going to pass this if i'm going to get an a get the first part out of the way now and then you have it in your back pocket and if you don't need it, you, you're like, oh, I'm just going to throw this away. But if you do need it, you have it all done already. And so you can go, oh, see, I am all set. Well, that's how I would do it. But that's just me. Um, but each chapter you know, has stuff in it. Um, chapter two is descriptive statistics. We'll, here's, like I said, here's the book. Here's the link to put your lecture notes in. You know, we'll ignore where it says video notes. Um, it doesn't work. These are all the videos that are part of that thing. Um, and this takes you to uh, the um, uh, WebAssign, 
this takes you to the textbook. There's, if you want to do more problems, there's more problems here. There's lots and lots of problems. So feel free. Um, if you're like, I need to learn more. I don't get it. I'm stuck. Feel free to, you know, I give you plenty of things to, to use that you, at your discretion. Um, so that's kind of the whole course in a nutshell. Um, some days we will get done earlier than two hours, like today. Uh, some days we will get right up to that <laughs> mark. Um, but it really has to do with like how many questions you guys have and like if you need me to go over stuff. So the more, and that's fine. Like I said, I don't have a problem with doing that. I want to make sure you understand it. Um, but I also don't want to waste your time. So um, I don't want to have to talk forever unless people have questions. I guess people are good. All right. Um, so like I said, this is being recorded. I'm going to let's stop sharing. And you'll see it's recording. Uh, there's a little recording button right there. See, recording in progress. 